right, welcome to video number four in the five part Get Email Marketing Clients video series. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to close deals on the phone like a boss, even if you have zero sales experience. Okay, so we covered a few things by now. Uh, we talked about the freelance copywriting model, explain why it's a great place to start. We talked about your dream client, uh, the criteria that I use and how to get them. We talked about in the last video, how to reach out to clients without feeling like a sleazeball. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to close deals on the phone like a, bo like a boss, even if you have zero experience. So once someone says yes, when you're reaching out, I'd like to learn more. We'll talk about how to turn them into an actual client from a lead to a client. And the next week in the last video, we'll talk about three ways that you can scale to 100K a year in profits using email copywriting. Uh, let's get to what we're covering today in this video. We'll first talk about the flow of a sales call, the, the structure of it. We'll talk about how to take payment. If a client says yes, what do you do from there? We'll talk, we'll, I'll show you some of the tools that we use. How to not frick up or mess up the call. Uh, some tips and tricks on that. And then lastly, seven money mindset and sales tips to keep you focused and encouraged as you're going through and doing this. Okay, let's talk about first the flow of a sales call. So uh, I'm gonna break this down into different parts and it starts off with the intro and some very short, light, small talk. Uh, so you can ask about the weather, ask them where they're calling in from. And what this is doing is you're building rapport and it reduces tension. So I like to keep this short. Don't spend like, you know, five, 10 minutes just talking about sports or whatever it is. Keep this short so that you can stay on track, right? Be respectful of both your and your prospect's time. Number two, you're gonna set the frame. So, and don't worry, I'll talk about some questions that I like to ask as we're going through the call in the next slide, but you're setting the frame for the call and you're taking control. So you might say something like, okay, Sean, so how these calls usually go is, uh, I'd like to learn a little bit more about your business, see if it can actually help you. So I'll ask questions about you and where you're currently at. And if it sounds like I can help you, I'll tell you more about what we have to offer at the end. Does that sound good, right? So you're, you're setting the frame, you're establishing authority, you're taking the reins uh, and control of the call, right? You're guiding the call. So from there, you're gonna start asking questions, right? So you're gonna ask questions to understand the person's current situation. You're, gonna, you're asking questions to understand their business, their current challenges and their pain points in relation to what you have to offer, which in this case is email marketing, right? So you're gonna be asking questions about their, their sales, their leads, their conversions, uh, what they're currently doing with email, how big their list is, right? Um, so those are examples of questions about their current situation, where they're currently at when you are talking to them before using your service. From there, you're gonna go into desired situation, right? So you, now you're gonna try and figure out, you're asking questions to understand where they want to go. What does success look like to them, right? What does uh, a good outcome look like to that prospect? Okay, so you're gonna be, out, again, I'll show you examples of these questions on a slide from now, okay? Uh, from there, you're gonna give them reassurance, right? So you're gonna make them feel like they are in good hands, that you're the right person to help them. So you can do that by sharing any track record that you have. If you don't have a track record or client wins, you can share your experience or samples of your work. The important thing is that you don't lie here, right? Don't say that you've generated a million dollars if you have never written an email, email before or worked with a client before, right? Don't lie. So just be upfront if this is your first client that you are looking to get. Be upfront about that, right? Just tell them you've been practicing and you've been honing your skills and you'd like to help a business increase their sales with what you've learned so far, okay? Uh, from there, you're gonna re repeat back to them, okay? And this is one of the, this is the most power, I learned this in a book called uh, Never Split the Difference, it's a negotiation book. And what the author talks about, his name is Chris Voss, he says to repeat the clients, whatever they said back to them, right? So if they're gonna tell you about their current and desired situation, and you're gonna repeat that back to them, right? So you should have been mentally noting or physically taking notes on what they're saying during this call. And you are just gonna say what they said right back to them. So you're here, you said you're here, you said you wanna to get to here, this is what success looks like to you. You're struggling with X and you're looking for someone to help you with Y. Am I getting this right? So they're gonna be, if, you, if you're actually taking notes and you're repeating back to them, they're gonna be like, yeah, that, that is exactly what I'm looking for, right? Even if you're just saying their words back to them. So you are, throughout this whole process, you need to be paying attention, you need to be listening, taking notes if you can, and when we get to this step six here, you are just repeating back to them what they've just told you. Okay, very powerful stuff here. Now, seven is the close. So you're gonna tell them what you're offering, tell them how it's gonna help them achieve their desired result, use numbers as much as possible, doing the math for them. You're gonna state the price, 
and then you need to shut up, right? Don't talk yourself out of a sale, right? So as soon as you state all this stuff here, right, you tell them what you're offering, tell them it's gonna, how it's gonna help them, you tell them uh, numbers if you can, how it's gonna help them go from A to B, you're gonna tell them the price and then you shut up and you let them marinate in that, right? Sometimes they'll take a while to say something back to you, they're gonna be thinking about, it, okay? So some examples, here's some examples of questions that I might ask during a call. Uh, here, the first question here is what I might ask when I am just starting the call after I've set the frame, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what are their, their current challenges, their pain points, what are they dealing with that got them to schedule this call? So very simple. What got you interested in taking this call with me today? And some prospects, they'll just open up and start telling you everything about their, their challenges, their pain points, why they scheduled a call, right? Um, so this is a very powerful question. It's an open-ended question. It, let, it puts the ball in their, the prospect's court. And some people will come back with short answers, but sometimes you'll get the gold and they'll just expand upon everything that they're struggling with, right? Um, so that's the first example. You might ask, could you tell me a bit more about your current email marketing strategy? What's been working or not working for you? So again, we're diving into their current situation. We're trying to see what they've done so far and what has or hasn't worked. Uh, what's your vision for your company over the next six to 12 months in terms of revenue growth? So now we're trying to see where are they trying to go? right? What, how much money are they trying to make in their business uh, so that we know what we're shooting for with their email campaigns? How big is your email list currently? What strategies are you using to grow your list? So this is kind of a current situation question mixed with a qualification question. If the person says here, oh, I don't actually have an email list, then we know we can't help them, right? So this is kind of like a qualifier and a current situation question in one. And how big is your email list currently? We want, to, we want to see how big their email list is. That kind of gives us an idea of how big the company is and if we can help them. And we want to know what they're doing to grow their list. We want to know that they're actively growing their list. Okay, so if they say something like, oh, I don't have a list or I'm not growing my list, uh, that's a red flag, right? If we're, if we're offering email as a service because it means that we, we can't help them. What's your current conversion rate of leads into paying customers? Now this question, uh, I don't always ask this, uh, but you know, a lot of people don't know their numbers, right? That's just the truth. A lot of business owners, they don't know their numbers. They don't know the conversion rate. So a lot of them might say, I don't know. I like to ask this to see if they'll give me an answer there. So I at least know if I can help improve upon that. Okay. Uh, if we're having this conversation in six months from now, and you were looking back on the previous six months, what would have needed to happen for you to be happy with your business? Um, so this, this is a desired situation question, right? So now we're trying to figure out what success looks like to them. If you were to look back six months from now, what would need to happen for this to be a success, right? Working together to be a success, okay? Do you think emailing once per weekday instead of once per month would help to increase sales? Um, so now we're just trying to figure out, this question's a little, it's kind of a curveball here, but we're trying to figure out if um, they're going to actually sign on with what we do, right? This is an example for a daily email service. So if they say, no, I don't think that's gonna work. I think that's actually pretty spammy. I don't wanna do that at all. Then we know that they're not gonna wanna agree to a daily email service, right? So this kind of this question is another one of those filtering qualification questions. Do you think that emailing once per weekday instead of once per month would help you to increase your sales? If they say, if they're like totally against that, that's kind of a red flag for me as well. Like I, I don't wanna have to force or educate them on why they should be emailing more, okay? Uh, so what I try to do here is I try to ask open-ended questions to learn more about, as much as possible about their business, their products, uh, the problems related to what I have to offer, annual revenue, profit margin, average customer value, target customer. I try to get all these things, as much information as possible, anything that will help me understand if I can get a result for them, okay? So these are just some of the questions here. This is not um, all inclusive. This is not the only questions I ask. Uh, but this just gives you an idea of the flow of some of the questions I ask in a sales conversation. So if they say no, you wanna make note of any objections so that you can address them in your, your marketing messaging and in future calls, right? So there's gonna be objections that come up when people say no on a sales call. You wanna take a note of all those objections because those are that's gold right there. That's stuff that you can use in making your copy, your messaging, and your sales process a lot stronger in the future. Now, what you also wanna do is see if you can offer them better payment terms or a downsell to get them in the door. So an example, offer a trial, like if you're trying to offer a daily email package for like two, $3,000 and they're not up for it, offer a trial email for $100 to send to their list. And if it goes well, 
then you can sign on for a longer term relationship from there. Right, so that's an example of a down sell, like a trial email, a hundred bucks or so to send out just one email to their list, see how it does, if they like it, then you can sign on for a longer term monthly deal. Okay, so if they do say yes, if you have gone through the closing process and they say, yes, I'd like to move forward, you're almost there, right? A lot of people will say yes and fall off from there. You need to seal the deal by taking their payment. So I never consider a client closed unless I see the money coming in through my account. So let's talk about how to take payment, uh, the different steps and tools that we use for that. So step number one is send an agreement for the person to sign. And we use a tool called PandaDoc. I, I don't know how much it costs right now. I'm on, I'm on an annual plan, but it allows you to send service agreements for your clients to sign. So we send that out whenever someone says yes and it states the work that's gonna be done. You don't have to make it super complicated. Uh, it, it tells them the pricing, the terms and conditions. And no, people ask me all the time, can I have a copy of it? No, I don't give this out unless you are a private student or a client. So please don't ask in the YouTube comments. Uh, there are legal terms and conditions in there. So I don't, want just, I don't wanna just throw that out online and have everybody use that, okay? Number two, send them a payment link. So you can set up a simple Stripe or payment, uh, PayPal payment processing account, then use a tool like PayFunnels to send over a payment link. So what PayFunnels does is it, it hooks up to your Stripe account and it allows you to just send a one-click link that a client can click on and it takes them to a page where they can pay their invoice and you can set up recurring billing or one-time billing, okay? So step three, once they pay, your work begins. So once the person completes payment and you see it come into your account, your Stripe or your PayPal account, congrats, you now officially have a client. Now you begin work on the project, right? Now you begin writing their emails. So never start writing their emails no matter what the client says until you receive that payment. I've made that mistake before where I've started doing work for a client and they didn't pay me and they didn't end up becoming a client because they didn't end up paying me. Um, so you don't wanna get into that situation, right? Always get the payment first up front before work begins. Now, uh, let's talk about some tips how to not frick up or mess up the sales call. Number one, you wanna listen more and talk less, okay? There's this common misconception about sales that it's about who is like talking the most and who is the most extroverted and out there. What you should really be doing is listening more, talking less, taking notes, being attentive, right? And then you're gonna be repeating the, whatever they said back to them, right? Uh, so you should be asking questions to open and guide the conversation, but the prospect should be the one doing most of the talking and you should be doing most of the listening, right? So you shouldn't be trying to talk over them and trying to give your spiel about your product or your service. You should be the one asking questions, guiding the conversation, but they should be doing 80% of the talking. Number two, be a damn professional. Show up on the dot and be in a quiet place. And this, this really annoys me for like being both on the receiving end and the person that's booking the call. Uh, I have people who will book calls with me all the time and not show up or they'll show up like 10 minutes late. That just really annoys me. So it uh, doesn't matter what side you're on, whether you're, you're the one scheduling the call and you're guiding it or you're the one showing up to the call. Always be professional, show up on the dot, be in a quiet place, don't have like kids crying in the background or whatever. Uh, be a damn professional, okay? Number three, avoid neediness. So pe pe people can smell neediness from a mile away. If you go into a call with the mentality of, I need this client to pay my bills, even if you do, right? They can feel it, people can always feel that. They can feel that desperation and they won't close. No one wants to work with needy or desperate people, okay? So don't be needy on the call, like don't go into the call thinking I need to close this client to close my to pay my bills, even if you do. They will always be able to feel that on the receiving end. Number four, have a sales script. Yes, you should have a sales script to follow. Like a mechanic has his wrench, the script is like a salesperson's tool, all right? So this does not make you robotic. It makes you efficient and keeps the sales conversation on track. So you don't need to read like word for word, like a, a sales conversation. It's not gonna be the same every single time, but you wanna have a script in front of you to help you guide you through that conversation, right? So you're not stuck and just like, uh, I don't know what to say next. Step five, do your research. So you should know the basics about your prospect and their company before the call. If you show, if you show up to the call and ask them what company they work for, you will sound like an amateur, right? And I've had this happen when I've, uh, there's been like software and products and services that I've tried to sign up for and they didn't even know my name, they didn't know my company, they didn't do any research and you can probably guess I didn't end up becoming a customer because it seemed amateurish, right? So you wanna do your research beforehand, 
do research into the person, the prospect, and their company. And you should have all this information when they schedule a call with you. Number six, know your market. So you should know your market and how your offer helps them get a desired result. And you should be able to speak in their language, meaning you should know what terms they use, what kind of words they use, if there's any slang that they use to explain certain pains and problems and things that they want. You should know all that stuff, right? You're not gonna be perfect at the beginning, but you should be learning as you go and taking note of those things. So know what your market wants and how your offer helps them to get it and, and the language that they use when talking about their problems and the things that they want. Uh, so seven money mindset and sales tips. And these are things that will help you going and help you push forward even when things get tough. And they will get tough, especially if you have no experience in sales. This is gonna feel uncomfortable, especially in the beginning. So here are seven tips to help you going, your mindset and sales tips to keep you going even when things do get tough and get uncomfortable. Number one, always have this mentality, right? If you are an email copywriter, you can help people to generate sales. They need you more than you need them. Most businesses want more sales. They need it to stay afloat. If you have a skill to help them do that, they need you, right? You have a skill that they need to keep them in business. So always go in there knowing that you have something that they need that is very useful to them. Number two, every no gets you closer to a yes. So when I first got started, I needed nine no's to get one yes, right? Which is basically a 10% close rate. So every time I'd get a no, I counted up a no as one step closer to a yes. So I get one no, two no's, three no's. I said, okay, I only need is six more no's and I'll get one paid client, right? So you wanna flip it, right? Don't get so discouraged about getting rejected or getting those no's in the beginning. Think of it like every no gets you closer to that yes, that person who wants to sign on with you as a paying client. Number three, yes, volume matters, especially in the beginning, right? There's some, a lot of people have a hard time wrapping their head around this. Volume does matter in the beginning. If you have no track record, no case studies, no previous clients, especially volume matters, okay? If you send out a hundred messages and you don't get a response, don't give up. People always give up before they've, they've, they've sent out enough messages and enough volume. It's part of the game and volume means more chances at bat. So the person who sends out, I mean, given if you watch my previous video, make sure that the outreach messages are good. The person who sends out a thousand messages versus a hundred, the person who sends out a thousand is always gonna have more chances at getting a client because he's sending out more volume, right? It's just simple math here, right? So as long as you're sending out good messages, and if you watch my previous video, you'd know how to do that, the more, Messages that you send out, the more outreach messages, the more chances that you have at getting that paying client. So yes, volume does matter. Yes, you will feel like an imposter. So this happens to everyone, especially at the beginning. I don't think it actually ever goes away 100%. Like if when I get on sales calls, I still get nervous. I still get butterflies in my stomach. But as long as you're honest and ethical, you have nothing to worry about, right? So don't again, don't lie about your track record. Don't lie about having a, a ton of clients if you don't. Uh, don't lie about having worked with clients if you haven't before. Be honest, be ethical. You have nothing to worry about, right? Some people will find it refreshing that you are being upfront about maybe not working with clients in the past. You've been working your butt off to learn and this is gonna be your first time actually helping a business with it, okay? Number five, money is attracted to speed. You will never have everything perfect. Money loves speed and the faster that you can go out to the market and start making valuable offers to your marketplace, the faster you're gonna see money rolling into your bank account, okay? So money is attracted to speed. Don't focus on getting your website and all your content and everything up and going before you have your first client. Just start creating your outreach messages, finding the right prospects and reaching out to them based on the dream client criteria. I think that's video number two. And making offers, right? Trying to get on the phone with as many people as possible to see if you can turn them into clients. Number six, Selling isn't sleazy. Everyone thinks that selling is this slimy tactic. They always think of those infomercial guys that are pitching those shamwows or whatever, like back in the day, pitching those shady products. But if you have something that can actually help people improve their life in some way, selling is the most noble thing that you can do, right? You're helping people improve their life, their business, whatever it is, their bank account, their health. If you have something that can actually help somebody, not sleazy in any way. It's one of the most noble things you can do is, get, is getting them to actually invest in it so that they can improve their lives in some way, okay? And number seven, simple but not easy, right? The process, sales in itself, it's a very simple process. You basically pick a market, ask them if they want help getting more sales or with the thing that you help with, 
help those who say yes. The steps are simple, but not easy. Right? You have to be consistent with it. You're gonna get some no's, you're gonna get some rejection, especially in the beginning. You're gonna have to get better over time and tune your script and your messaging. Uh, but it's if you follow through with the steps and you're consistent with it, eventually you're gonna lock down that first, second, third, fourth, fifth client if you're consistent with this, okay? So recap of what we covered. We talked about the flow of a sales call, how to take payment if a client says yes, and also what to do if a client says no. Make, make sure you're taking notes of all those objections and using it in your future messaging. We talked about how to not frick up and mess up the call and seven money mindset and sales tips to keep you going even if things get tough. Uh, so next week, we're gonna talk about three ways that you can scale to 100K a year in profits using email copywriting. Uh, and if you wanna learn more about email and stay in touch with me and, and see my daily emails as well, go to emailrainmaker.com. That'll take you to my free Facebook group on email marketing. And I'm gonna be sharing a lot more trainings, tips, tricks, and insights on email in that group. So that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, comment below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you next week.